Hello again. The psalm I've chosen for this week is Psalm 119, verses 129 to 135. Your statutes are wonderful, therefore I obey them. The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant, longing for your commands. Turn on me and have mercy on me, as you always do to those who love your name. Direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. Redeem me from human oppression, that I may obey your precepts. Make your face shine on your servant and teach me your decrees. Your statutes are wonderful, it says in our translation, but I think wonderful is a bit weak, really. It doesn't have the oomph that the writer had in mind. I mean, Rachel and I have been to some wonderful art exhibitions. We normally go to about one a month, or, well, we did. But the Bible isn't wonderful in that way. It's not something to be admired and wondered at. Wow, that was brilliant. I liked that. So beautiful, so clever, so moving. Uh, no, as we reflect on who God is, as we meet him in the Bible, and as we consider what he expects of us, it's meant to have an awe-inspiring and mind-blowingly powerful effect on us and change us, like it changes the psalm writer. Your statutes are wonderful, he says, therefore I obey them. In the next verse, he says, the unfolding of your words gives light. As we read words written by fallible human beings in the Bible and read their accounts of far from perfect people, sometimes doing the right thing and other times failing miserably, God wants to speak to us and bring out the light we need. It could be like a floodlight suddenly illuminating everything, including things we might like hidden. It could be like a searchlight picking out particular things, a car headlight or, or a torch pointing the way ahead, or what other sorts of light are there? A lighthouse warning of danger, a red traffic light shouting stop, or a night light bringing comfort. The unfolding of your words gives light. The awe-inspiring, light-bringing word of God. The psalm writer finds all this mind-blowing and he wants more. Verse 131. I open my mouth and pant, longing for your commands. He's recognised the truth that our God is a God who loves to communicate with us. And he, for one, is ready and waiting for whatever God's got to say to him. Yes, please. So the message to us is obvious. Follow the psalm writer's example and ask God to speak to us through the Bible, now, in our current situation. Our lives have been turned upside down in just a few weeks. We're living in a world none of us ever imagined. But that gives us the chance to re-engage with the Bible from a fresh viewpoint. We can take this new experience we've all had thrust on us, life in lockdown Britain, and read the Bible through that prism, the prism of powerlessness and insecurity. The thing is, we're used to privilege. We're citizens of a wealthy country with the power and the money to make our own decisions about how we live our lives. Our natural counterparts in the Bible would be the winners, the Egyptians with their Israelite slaves, the Babylonians taking whole countries into exile, or the Romans living in comfort in their centrally heated villas. But the Bible looks at things from the point of view of the poor, the oppressed, the occupied, the losers. Maybe this new reality we're facing of not being in control of our destinies can bring us new insights as we read familiar Bible stories again, hear God speaking and make our response. I hope so. The psalm writer says, your statutes are wonderful, therefore I obey them. May that be our experience too. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for your word, the written word and the word made flesh in Jesus, the light of the world. Challenge and rebuke us, comfort and inspire us 
as we face up to that word. Amen. Bye-bye.